AEW Full Gear 2021 is in the books. And our man, the cowboy we need, Hangman Page, has taken his cowboy S word. He's taken that cowboy S word and he's made cowboy salad. And the, the, the salad has a, has a giant championship belt in because Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page in the main event of Full Gear. We've got ourselves a new champion. Kenny is actually the longest running AEW champion in the promotion's history. He won it on like the 8th of December episode or something last year. So he's nearly had it a full year. It's like 340 days or something. I thought, you know, going in, I thought Kenny will retain, go on to beat Brian, go on to beat Punk, and then are all out next year. So like two, three years after Hangman Page went for the inaugural championship against Chris Jericho, that's when Page can win it. Here, you just give him some stuff and he kicks out the one-winged angel or something. We got a lot of stuff in this match. When about 25 minutes, you had a, a ref bump. You had Don Callis getting involved and eventually getting decked. The title being involved. Uh, I bumped through a table, but the ultimate bit came when the Young Bucks came down. And you're like, oh, are they going to stop Hangman Page doing anything? Hangman Page hits a one-winged angel on Kenny Omega, so still the one-winged angel is protected. And he gets onto the apron after a near fall to go for a buckshot lariat. And the Bucks are like, and Nick almost looks like he's going to do it, but then he goes, no, I'm not going to get involved. So Page flips in, hits the back of Kenny's head with the buckshot lariat. And then he goes round to the other side to hit the full front one. And Matt's on the other side, Matt Jackson of the Young Bucks. And Matt Jackson just looks at him with the most beautiful expression and just goes, it's yours, hang up. You know, that sort of look. And Hangman Page flips in, buckshot lariat on Kenny. One, two, three, your new AEW world champion. The Bucks don't get in to like reconcile and hug, but they just nod. It's the Dark Order who closed the show. They get in, they offer him a beer, but Paige pushes it away. He just wants the love. He hugs them all. It's a beautiful image to go off the air with. One of, you know, there was no wrestling angle at the end here. It was just everyone celebrating joyously uh, the coronation of a new champion. Of course, he will go against the winner of the championship eliminated tournament, which was decided as Brian Danielson. Uh, he beat Miro earlier in the night with a fantastic finish. It was a, a working over each other's body parts for quite a long time, but then and, and Miro was just like, nah, I ain't gonna sell any of your stuff, buddy. You can kick, kick me here, kick me here. Go on, ow, ow, ow. Yeah, doesn't hurt me. One kick to you and it wipes you out. It was a real good tale of Miro's brute strength versus Brian Danielson's more slight frame. Uh, power overcomes the technique but in the end it was a sort of tornado ddt off the top rope that knocked out miro and it was i love a, i love a ko finish you don't really see them in wrestling very much but aubrey was like boom, 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 calling this off right away so we will have danielson versus hangman page as presumably the next program going forward which is huge maybe that will be the big winter is coming show tv special that we had in December last year, maybe it will main event, be main evented by that match. Uh, as for Kenny, as for the Bucks, is this the end of the Elite? The, the, the Elite uh, spin-off, the Super Click with Adam Cole, they lost their match as well earlier earlier in the night with Jungle Boy, Jurassic Ex uh, Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus and Christian Cage in a really, really fun street fight. Falls count anywhere. Uh, Jungle Boy picked up the win there. So now you've got Adam Cole lost with the Young Bucks. The Young Bucks didn't help Kenny at the end. Kenny is no longer the world champion. There's got to be some character changes here. It sort of felt like a face turn for the Bucks, definitely. I don't know where Adam Cole's going to go. Of course, he's been interacting with Bobby Fish on Rampage and Carl O'Reilly's contract is up soon in NXT. So maybe an undisputed thing. There was a few disputed references, actually, on the commentary here, you know, like Adam Cole is undisputedly one of the greats. Uh, and Kenny, where does Kenny go? Where does Don go? Is this, will this make a face? Kenny, will Kenny take some time off? He's always banged up reportedly. 
Uh, as for the match itself and the overall card, it was a really, really good show. I would put it maybe... This is just knee-jerk reactions here. I've literally just finished watching it. I'd put it probably below all the other AEW shows this year, but that's not to say it was bad. It was, it was incredible, particularly the opening MJF versus Darby Allen match. That's match of the night for me. Followed by CM Punk versus Eddie Kingston. An emotional, intense brawl. Went 11 minutes, but it was just smash mouth offense from both guys. Punk cut himself open. He was bleeding. Punk did some of the five moves of doom from John Cena. Shoulder tackle, shoulder tackle, shoulder tackle. Um, what's that move called? Where he lifts you up and just pirouettes you and puts you down again. And he sort of stood up pretending to do the five knuckle shuffle thing. Of course, because a lot of that feud is based around Punk has become what he hated in that feud with Cena. And Eddie is now the, the young Punk. Uh, but Punk, Eddie earned Punk's respect. Punk went for the handshake at the end there. And Eddie was like, no, because he's still emotional, still awesome. Excellent match. Uh, but yeah, second best for me. And then probably the... I really, really like the street fight, the Fool's Count Anywhere street fight, which Jungle Boy picked up the win for. Then maybe I like the Brian Danielson uh, Miro match. So that's, that's four matches there. And then probably Hangman Page versus Kenny Omega in terms of in ring work. Not the five star classic I think we all thought it could be. Uh, I think I actually preferred the Revolution, the Full Gear match, sorry, 2020 in that. Uh, the the tournament final, but the finish was was and of course the outcome was so emotional and just the prestige and the the long term story going in, but yeah, the, for me right now I, I feel like it was actually the fifth best match on the card. Not really a neg on that match, but it was a testament to how good the rest of the show was. Of course, the result of that match is what makes it a very special occasion. Uh, as for the rest of the show, there's a huge announcement. The first jump through the kind of forbidden door. It's kind of the foreclosed house door, I guess. Ring of Honor has is, is in the process of shutting up shop, at least for a period. It's going on a hiatus and it's going to have its final pay-per-view in December. Uh, Jay Lethal, one of their most tenured, biggest stars, been the champion multiple times. He's been there like 11 years. He turned up just before the main event. Tony Schiavone introduced him and Jay Lethal was like, I'm all elite. He signed a fantastic signing for AEW, adding even more depth to their roster. And he got started right away. He said, I want to go at Sammy Guevara's TNT title. Sammy Guevara, who had just wrestled against American top team in a winning effort, came out and said, see you Wednesday. So we're going to have Jay Lethal versus Sammy Guevara for the TNT title, which, to be honest, Sammy hasn't done a great deal with. He's still a new champion, but he kind of got enveloped by the inner circle American top team feud. But maybe, the, you know, Jay Lethal's a, a huge, huge name in, in certain circles. Do you just want to give Sammy another win here? Or do you put the belt on Lethal? For me, I kind of, I would, I would prefer to see it on Lethal, I think. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you guys think? Ring of Honor guy walks in here, takes a TNT title belt. Um, but the rest of the card, what else was on there? First off, four hours long, main show. Five hours with the pre-show. It's always too long for me. I like a three-hour show main card. I like an NXT, a classic NXT takeover. Um, and... Yeah, if I'm if I'm looking at this, yeah, there's there's a few matches I could cut. There's a few matches I could have uh, definitely gotten rid of the uh, House of Black, Malachi Black and Andrade versus Team Cody, the American team of uh, Pack and Cody. Even though Pack's Geordie, it feels like anything that touches Cody is donned in the American flag. Cody was booed heavily. And this, of course, has, you know, it's a pretty 
big storyline on TV. It's had some really great matches. Cody versus Black, Pac versus Andrade. It's, yeah, fantastic stuff. But this did feel a bit dynamite, really. A really, really great match on dynamite. But was it a match that needed to be on the pay-per-view card? I don't think so. Add into that the fact that Cody's persistent babyface framing is not connecting with the crowd in the way he wants it to. Rather than make it a cool atmosphere where you've got passionate voices on each side, it kind of deflated the crowd. And I think that was a mistake. Uh, the women's title match as well, Britt Baker versus Ty Conte, Baker retained. It was a match that I don't think anyone ever bought into. It wasn't a hot feud, uh, certainly not for me. Ty Conte, I think, is such a good prospect for the future. But right now, there was no chance she was ever going to beat Baker. And... They gave her loads. She kicking out of everything. She she didn't even tap in the lockjaw. It was it was sort of a roll up thing. You had Rebel and Jamie Hayler getting involved a lot. For me, I I I didn't think it worked that well. Unfortunately, I, I, there's there's loads of other women I would have preferred to see in this kind of showcase spot. Sheeda and Deeb have been doing great work. Of course, Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker, like, when are we going to go back to that feud? So overall, yeah, it didn't grab me because I didn't believe that it was an unpredictable result. Every other match on this show, I was like, it could go either way, and I don't mind what either way it goes. Uh, and the tag match, the tag title match, Lucha Bros retained against FTR, with a weird finish. Really fun match, of course. It's the Lucha Bros, it's FTR, it was fantastic. But then just the the finish was Cash Wheeler going under the ropes, the, sorry, under the ring with Dax, and he comes up with the super Ranas? You know, their Lucha gimmick, and he's wearing the mask, and they pin him, but he's not the legal man. And you're like, well, what was the plan there? Was Dax going to help him? Because Dax never came out with him. And the referee should have noticed the hair that was quite obviously coming through the Lucha mask because Excalibur did. He said that right away. It didn't work for me, so we'll see where that goes. But overall, three... Two, two extraordinary matches with Punk and Kingston and MJF and Derby. Like... I, pro I don't think I'll give them five stars, but goddamn, if it's not five stars, it's like four, three quarters, whatever the, the the closest you can get to five stars is. The rest is really good, and of course it has that fantastic ending. Let me know what you thought of the show down below. We'll have Pete with the sort of edited review later today, and also go over to the WrestleTalk podcast channel, because me and Luke are going to be reviewing that whole show right now, even though... It's half five in the morning. But I love it. Love AEW. <laughs> Subscribe.